at least one of a graph or its complement must be connected. So that's a neat little result. We've talked a bit about complement graphs, so I assume if you're watching this video, you are somewhat familiar with them. Super quick example, say we've got this graph G. The complement of G has the same vertex set and the opposite edge set. Opposite edge set is not a common formal term in graph theory, but I think looking at this example of a graph and its complement, you can see what I mean by opposite edge set. And if you want more details, go check out my lesson on complement graphs. But we want to get into this proof, so how are we going to prove this theorem? Well, for starters, we want to begin with an equivalent statement of the theorem that is just a little nicer to jump into a proof with. Since this theorem tells us that at least one of a graph or its complement have to be connected, that means that if a graph G is disconnected, then its complement must be connected. So these are equivalent statements. The second one is just a bit more suggestive of how our proof is going to proceed. Both of these statements tell us that it cannot be the case that both a graph and its complement are disconnected. So let's walk through the proof and see why that is. Of course, we'll begin with a disconnected graph G. Remember that the vertex set of G is equal to the vertex set of G complement by definition of a complement graph. So if we can show that every pair of distinct vertices in G is connected in G complement, we will have shown that G complement is connected. That's nice because that means we can just work with the vertices of G, and G is a graph we actually know something about. We know that it's disconnected. So that is a helpful observation. So let's take two vertices from G, and then we just need to show that they have to be connected in the complement. So we've taken two arbitrary but distinct vertices from G, and since G is disconnected, it must have at least two vertices. Since G is disconnected, of course, it's got at least two components. So there's two possibilities with our two vertices. They're either in different components, so U is here and V is here, or they're in the same component. So that's how we will break this down. Suppose that U and V are in different components. Then, since U and V are in different components, it must be the case that U and V are not adjacent in G. So UV is not an element of the edge set of G. Thus, by definition of graph complement, UV is an element of the edge set of G complement. Because remember, the complement graph has the opposite edge set. Thus, these two vertices U and V are connected. Now, the other possibility, of course, is that U and V are in the same component. So that's what we suppose next. Suppose U and V are in the same component, component, let me erase that S, they're in the same component of G. Now, this is just a little bit trickier, but not by much. Again, our graph G, since it's disconnected, it's got at least two components. So U and V are over here in the same component, and there's got to be at least one vertex over here in this other component. This other vertex, we'll call W, that must exist is our key. So again, since our graph G is disconnected, it's got at least two components. So U and V are in one component, and then there's some other component that has some vertex. This vertex, since it's in a different component from U and V, it cannot be adjacent to U and it cannot be adjacent to V. So we'll go ahead and write that. There exists a vertex W in the vertex set of G such that, which I'll abbreviate ST, such that U and W are not adjacent in G, which means UW is not an element of the edge set of G, and similarly, VW is not an element of the edge set of G. So U and W are not adjacent, and V and W are not adjacent, of course, because they are in different components. And you can probably see where this is going. This implies that U and W must be adjacent in G complement. So UW is an element of the edge set of G complement, and similarly, V and W must be adjacent in the edge set of G complement as well. And why does that matter to us? Well, we've just shown that U and W are adjacent, so there's some edge like that, and V and W are adjacent, so we've got an edge like that, and oh, look at that. There we've got a path connecting U and V. So we'll write that. Thus, going from U to W to V is a UV path in G complement. 
Thus, take any two distinct vertices from G that you want. They could be in the same component or in different components. They're going to be connected in G complement. And therefore, by definition of connected, G complement is connected. So we have shown if a graph is disconnected, then its complement must be connected. And therefore, we've proven the original theorem that at least one of a graph or its complement must be connected. They can't both be disconnected. So that's pretty cool, and perhaps you've heard of self-complementary graphs. Those are graphs that are isomorphic to or have the same structure as their complements. And so a corollary of this theorem is that there does not exist a disconnected self-complementary graph. If there was such a graph, that would mean that a graph is disconnected and its complement is disconnected because they're the same graph structurally, and we know that can't be the case. So that's just a little interesting aside. In any event, I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that at least one of a graph or its complement is connected. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I got teeth behind my eyes that tear the flesh from what is sacred In my dreams I never die And if I do, I just awaken Gotta